yesterday, um, you know, it was a good day yesterday. We had a wedding here at the church yesterday. Some of you know Sally Blazik and Kenny Hydoff. They were married yesterday. And, uh, you know, afterwards they went up to Carol for, for their wedding reception with, you know, mostly family and a few very close friends. It's a wonderful day, wonderful celebration for the two of them. And I came across this article. It's, from, it's an old article. It's from June of 1990. It was in the Boston Globe, and it was about a, a wedding reception, an unusual wedding reception. There was a woman and her fiancé. Had, they had arranged to have their wedding reception at, at, at the Hyatt Hotel in Boston. But then a, a couple of months before the wedding, the invitations were already printed, right? They're ready to go out, and, and the groom gets cold feet. He says, well, I, I, you know, I would like a little bit more time to think about it. Of course, the woman, she's upset. All this planning has been done, the, the, the planning to get married, the, the reception is all arranged, and so she's not a happy camper. But what she does is she, she goes to the hotel, and she, she, she's, uh, in her mind, she's going to cancel this reception because the wedding is not going to happen anymore. But they told her, well, if you cancel, all the money that you've already paid, you'll forfeit that. You don't get a refund back. So she decided that instead of canceling the reception, that she would go ahead and she would have this party as it was planned. And, but, but what she didn't do is she didn't send out the invitations that uh, she had planned to send out. Instead, she had an alternate guest list, a different guest list. She decided she was going to treat the homeless people of Boston to this fancy dinner reception. You see, Ten years earlier, she had had a time in her life when she was homeless and had lived for a time in a homeless shelter. Now, she was fortunate enough to find a good job and to, you know, to come back out of that. And she got back on her feet. But she decided that she was going to send an invitation instead to the shelters and the rescue missions in Boston and invite the, those who were homeless. So she did that. And, and so this summer night in June, it was a June, to be a June wedding, you know, the people who were used to eating you know, whatever scraps they could scrounge up, they dined on this banquet of fine food I, I'm told that, that uh, oh, never mind, we'll go there. So <laughs> they're, they're dining on fine food, and there's waiters, they're, they're dressed in tuxedos, they're serving hors d'oeuvres. So you've got bag ladies, you've got drug addicts, they're sipping champagne, and they're eating wedding cake, and they're dancing at this party. It was an unusual kind of a night. <clears throat> and then in the scripture that we just read from Luke's Gospel, Jesus also tells a story about another host who refused to let a good party go to waste. It was also a party where there was an alternate guest list, where the, those who were invited first couldn't come. Now, we started the sermon series on parables, and so this is a parable. A parable is a story. Jesus was a great storyteller. So a parable is a story with, a, with a, another layer of meaning, a deeper layer of meaning. And Jesus often taught in parables, and most of his parables, they, they're intended to give us a glimpse, right? A glimpse into what the kingdom of God is like. I need to set the stage here just a little bit, you know, where, this, where the scripture started. Because Jesus is the guest at a dinner party. He's at the home of a Pharisee who's hosting it. And this is a pretty um, uh, important party. There's important people at the party, the wealthy and the powerful the well-connected. So while Jesus is there, you know, he's kind of watching, he's people watching, he's watching the, those around him as they're, they're jockeying for position at the table. They want the best places at the table, the most prestigious places of honor at the table. So he's watching them, and then he, he says to them, you know, when you get invited to a dinner, don't take the best spot because, you know, somebody more important than you might come and then you'll be embarrassed if the host says, well, you know, you need to move into this other seat over here. He says, instead, take a lower place at the table. And then, you know, you'll be honored when the, when the host says, oh, here, you need to move up to a better place. So first, don't take the best place. And then in this total breach of manners, none of us would ever do this, Jesus goes on to lecture the host about the guest list. He says, when you give a party, don't invite your wealthy relatives and friends. Don't do that because, you know, they're going to they're gonna invite you back. They're going to reciprocate, repay the favor. 
So don't do that. Instead, you know, invite the people who would never be able to, to pay you back. They would never be able to, to come to, uh, to dinner. Uh, you'd never go to dinner at their house. You know, so the, the poor and the crippled, the lame, the blind. Now keep in mind that the people that Jesus named, the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, they would no, never be included on a guest list because in, in uh, the first century Jewish society, they would be social outcasts. So here's Jesus. He's the guest in another man's home talking about seating arrangements and, and who should be on the guest list. And, and, you know, it doesn't say this, but I'm thinking that there's this awkward silence. It's like, who is this guy? And, 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 and what does this all mean? So this awkward moment. And, and, and then someone, you know, he wants to ease the tension. And this is where our scripture for today picks up. He says this. He says, what a blessing it will be to attend a banquet in the kingdom of God. So there's tension. He wants to ease it. So he deflects. And not from the present time, the present moment, which is what Jesus is talking about, but to some future time. You know, in the kingdom of God, what a blessing it will be to be at God's banquet in a future time. So he deflects from the present to, to some time in the future. Then the second thing we should notice here is, I, I think this is kind of under the surface with what he says, is that he makes the presumption that when that time comes, when that future time comes, that he and everybody else gathered around the table, they're also going to be invited to this feast. You know, they'll be guests at God's banquet table. So there's an underlying presumption. Won't that be great? Won't that be wonderful? We'll all be there to enjoy it. And so now Jesus launches into this story. It's about the banquet in the kingdom of God. And it's a story about a man who prepared a great feast and sent out many invitations, it says. Now, who does the man represent? This is, this, this is uh, in response to the banquet in the kingdom of God. So who does that man represent? The one who's having the feast. God. Jesus. Right? So it's going to this deeper layer. It's not just about this man. There's a deeper meaning here. So he sent out many invitations. It's going to be a big party. Now we need to remember that in the time of Jesus, when you were invited to a big event like this, it was a, a two-stage process. You know, um, not long ago, I got something in the mail from my nephew and his fiance. They're getting married next September, and it was a save the date kind of a thing. You, they, we do those now. They do those now, I guess. It's a magnet, and it sticks on my refrigerator. It's a save the date. And this is kind of a similar thing, except, you know, it's, they don't give an exact day or time. But there's this advanced team that goes out. Servants go out, and they begin this first invitation process. There's going to be a party. Are you, um, are you interested in coming? Would you like to come to the party? Again, there's no date. There's no time. It's just an advance invitation. And so now the guests who have been invited, they need to RSVP right there. Yes, I'm going to come. I'm planning to come. All right, so that's the first stage. And so the, the host, he gets an idea of how many fattened cattle he's got he's to um, roast, right, for his guests. And then those who are invited... Uh, you know, when the banquet's finally ready, you know, there's another uh, message to come. The servants go out again. Everything's ready. Everything's prepared. It's time to come. And so the guests who are invited, they're supposed to drop what they're doing, wash up, put on their best clothes, and then they come to the feast. But as Jesus continues the story, the unthinkable happens. It seems that those who have been invited says all the invited guests, those who originally said they were coming, they've changed their minds and they've, they've asked to be excused. You know, this first one says, well, you know, I'm sorry. I just bought a new farm, a new piece of property. I've got to go and I've got to check it out. Give my apologies to the host. I'm sure he'll understand. Then the second man shares, well, I, I bought some new livestock, so, some no, new work animals, and I'm on my way right now to, to try them out. Give my regrets to the host. Then the third one says, well, sorry, I just got married. Surely, you know, he doesn't expect me to come. Let him know that I'm not able to make it. They're excuses. They're excuses. You know, that thing that we do when we don't want to do something? You know, one definition of an excuse is this really just a dressed up lie. There's a reason given, but really not the real reason. Maybe we've heard some of those. 
you know, I'm sorry I can't go out with you on Friday night. I have to wash my hair. <laughs> or, you know, I'm sorry I didn't turn in my, my assignment. The dog ate my homework. You know, you, you hear these excuses and you think, yeah, right, right. After all, you know, what business person buys land or livestock without seeing it first? And, and, and what person says yes to a party when they know they'll be on their honeymoon? And we know that the host isn't very happy about the excuses. But he's not willing to allow his feast to go to waste. And so he tells his servants, go quickly into the streets and the alleys of the town and invite the poor and the crippled, the blind and the lame. In other words, go find the people in the city that the first group looks down on. Go get the helpless and the hopeless. Because I know that they'll enjoy this feast. They'll enjoy my banquet. The servants do that. They come back and they say, but there's still room. There's still room in the banquet hall. You know, this is a celebration. This is an event that deserves a full house. It's a banquet where every table should be full. And so the master, he sends them out again. Go to the country lanes, behind the hedges, and urge them to come. In other words, go beyond the city gates. Invite those who aren't Jewish to come. Compel them to come. They won't believe that they're invited but tell them there's room for them too. A parable is a story that has a deeper meaning. So it's a story about more than a man just wanting to hold a party and getting stood up by his guests. This is a parable that has eternal kingdom of God implications. Because Jesus is pointing to eternal consequences of rejecting the invitation to God's banquet. If those who were first invited, the first invited were the Jews, right? They're God's chosen people. If they uh, reject the invitation, if they reject Jesus, you know, others will be invited to take their place. Those thought to be unworthy. Even the Gentiles will be invited. Now keep in mind that Jesus is sitting around a table with a lot of Jewish leaders. And Jesus is saying, none of those first invited, those who have rejected the invitation, none of those will get even the smallest taste of my banquet. So the shocking thing in this parable is that those whom Jewish society would call unworthy have been declared worthy by the grace of God. They've been added to the guest list. Those who were invited, those who make excuses, might not be at the table. You might not be on the guest list anymore. Others will be invited to take your place at God's heavenly banquet. Now I'm sure that given the setting, given where he was, that this probably wasn't well received. It probably didn't endear him to those people sitting with him at the table. So what are the takeaways for us? Well first of all is to understand that we have been invited. Yes to this heavenly kingdom banquet. You know, and we, we look at that banquet and we think, well, that's in the time to come. It's in the future time. It's when I get to heaven. There'll be a big banquet, right? We say that in our communion liturgy every month. That this, there's a banquet table that's there. But, you know, there's something we need to remember, and that's the, that the kingdom of God isn't just some future time. Yes, that's true, but it's also in the present time. You know, we say the Lord's Prayer. You know, thy, thy uh, kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The kingdom of God is already here. It's a current reality for us. And so we need to, we need to be mindful of that. Yes, there's going to be a heavenly banquet. And we're, we're all invited to that. But there's also times in our lives, in our living today, where God continues to invite us into his presence. The God who loves us says, come and meet with me. When you're here in church on Sunday morning, you come, not because you want to hear the pastor talk or sing, but you come to meet with God. You know, the prayer at altar is often for the Holy Spirit to come and to, and to transform hearts and minds and lives, to meet people where they are. And so in, in your presence here this morning, you've come to meet with God. You've been invited to meet with God. You don't come here by accident that God has called you into his presence. So the, the first thing we need to remember is that you know, God continues to invite us. 
in the present time. So do we go with joy, you know, to meet with God? Excited to receive an invitation to meet with God? You know, God wants our company, but how often do we throw up excuses, our regrets? I'm too busy. I'm too tired. I don't have anything to wear. I don't know anyone there, or, or even worse, there'll be somebody there that I don't like. I'm sure this invite was supposed to go to someone else. I'm not worthy. It can't be for me. If you remember the parable, everyone was invited. The good, the bad, the acceptable, the unacceptable, the saint, the sinner, the Jew, the Gentile, men, women, young, old, those who have it all together, those who don't. We've been invited into something so much bigger than ourselves and in this life that we live. The God of the universe, the God of creation, wants to be with us, wants us to spend time with him. You know, yesterday was a busy day. And, you know, that football game just about wrung me out emotionally. I have to tell you. I was blessed by the rain delay because I didn't think I would see much of it. But I only missed the first quarter and a few minutes of the second quarter. So, you know, it all worked out. You know, so I'm, I'm wanting to go to bed. I'm tired. But God speaks into our hearts. And he spoke to me last night and said, no, take some time with me first. Take some time with me first. You know, and I needed that. I think, I think God knew that I needed that. Just a little bit of time, a few moments. So it would have been easy to say, I'm tired. I'll get with you in the morning. And sometimes it's busy in the morning too, isn't it? So you know, that's the first thing I think we, we need to, to understand. Is this kingdom of God time, this time with God, is, is also a present reality. The kingdom of God is a, it's a, the already but not yet. Jesus came. Jesus died. Jesus rose. He inaugurated God's kingdom. It's already here. We don't need to wait for it. So if you sense God inviting you to, into something deeper, you know, what are you going to do about it? Will you make the time? Or will you make an excuse and send a regret? Because the message is that the feast is ready. Drop everything else. Come now. Don't procrastinate. It's already here. It's not for down the road. Sometime in the future. It's also for today. Then the other thing that I want us to, to pull out of this parable, this deeper meaning, is, is that God calls us to be a people sent out to the street corners to invite others to the banquet. You know, we think about the church and we think, well, this is the, this is, uh, the church that, that, that uh, you come on Sunday morning. That's the church. But friends, that's not the church. You know, Jesus, uh, at the end of Matthew's Gospel, he gives the Great Commission. He sends people out. We are a sent out people. And the reason that we're sent out is to invite others in. You know, disciples make disciples. So if we're a disciple of Jesus, a follower of Jesus, we're given the task of inviting others to come. And when you invite them to come, don't just say, hey, come to church, arrange to meet with them. There's, there's a guy in the other church. He does, he's he's a wonderful at evangelizing, inviting people to church. But then he never shows up. So it's not an either or, it's a both and, right? If you invite somebody to church, then come with them. Meet with them. Introduce them to people. Help them to feel comfortable. There's nothing, uh, there's nothing that's more uncomfortable. It's going into a new place where you, you don't know anybody. Right? You don't know what's going to happen. So, we're called to invite. He doesn't, God doesn't want a, a banquet hall that's, that's half filled. He's throwing this party. He wants everybody to come. You know, our God is radically inclusive. There might be some people, when you get to heaven, you're going to see people and think, wow, that's a surprise. But God is inclusive. So God says to those who have already accepted the invitation, I'm sending you out to invite others in. And they might not be like you. You know, maybe they're poor. You know, invite those who are sick, you know, physically, emotionally, spiritually. Invite those who have been in prison, those who suffer from, you know, addictions, those who live with brokenness. I'm sending you to go and to offer this word of hope. Invite them. Bring them with you. You know, the guy that uh, broke the tension. You know, he did have something right. What a blessing it will be to attend a banquet in the kingdom of God. We've been sent to invite others to come to the best party they could ever imagine. 
into this life-giving, life-changing relationship with Jesus. Amen? Amen.